In this demo, we are going to demonstrate the use of smart selection in Splitworks. Here is quite a complicated part which we are going to split. First thing we do is use the split part menu from Splitworks to split the part into core and cavity. Here we can see that the actual split itself, at least in the preview, shows us that it's quite a complicated part, at least the faces, and we would have to do quite a lot of work to get it correct. So instead of um, moving the faces from part to part, we're going to move all the faces to the cavity to begin with. We go uh, folder by folder and move all the faces to the cavity folder. Next part is that we're going to use the smart selection in order to isolate the faces inside this part and move them to the core. So we use the selection which is to select boundary, external boundaries for the part and internal boundaries uh, of where we want the actual face selection to reach. And next we select faces and we can see that it's selected all the faces inside the part. We'd like to add also the, the face that we used as the boundary which we've added. We can isolate this and show what our selection and if this looks like the correct selection we can then use the menu which is move to move all the faces to the core and you can see now that we now have a well-defined core and cavity um, uh, according to the yellow parting lines that we can see. Next we're going to create the core surface with uh, the tools from Splitworks, plug the core holes, and finally create a parting surface. Once created, we can then go and create the core and cavity for this part using our core and cavity creation menu. Here we see a preview of the core and cavity. And we'll just make the core, the cavity, insert a little bit uh, thinner. Finally, uh, as a result, we can see now the core and cavity along with the part. Now, of course, this part is quite complicated, so this is not the core and cavity that we need. To create this part. So in order to work and create the cores and cavities that we actually need, we're going to go back into the part and create on the top of the part a the top cavity for the part. And again we're going to use the smart selection menu. Um, this time we pick uh, boundaries around the top of the part. You can see we have to pick all the boundaries and when we pick them all we can see a red line defining the boundary. But of course that's the external boundary and we need the internal boundary because that's where the selection will start. And as before we also pick faces to for the, as the internal boundary to stop the algorithm from, from selecting more. Finally, we go to the select faces, where it selects all the faces. We isolate them to see that that's what we wanted. And once we've done that, we then move them to one of the folders that we have, uh, we've called it a side call one folder. And you can see the faces changing colors. 
Then we use the standard splitworks function to create the surfaces on the side core. Um, we also have to plug it, plug the surface, which is very simple. And once we've done that, we're now going to actually create the side, we call it creating the side core, but it's actually the tool for the side core. We have a menu to do that, as you can see. And here we add an extension to that side call, or to the side call tool. The reason that it's a tool is because it belongs to the part, and it's not a separate part of the side call in the assembly. Now going back into the assembly, we can see that this tool, the side call tool, has actually created a hole in the cavity, and that's what we expected it to do. Next, we're going to open the cavity itself and split it using standard uh, SOLIDWORKS tools. Um, here we're going to look at the right face and use this plane to split the part into two separate parts, or actually two separate side cores. So once we've got we've done that, we can see that we've created the two separate side cores as well as the top um, cavity, and all of them are part of of the one is part of the cavity and one is actually part of the original part. Now we have a function which is which actually takes the tools and creates actual side cores from them. So first we're going to take the two cavity. Uh, 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 cavity cores or cavity side cores that we've created and um, we're going to request to save them as a, savet, as, as a side cavity 1 and side cavity 2 and this will automatically split them as separate parts and add them to the assembly in the correct place. So these are now separate parts in the assembly. We're going to do the same thing for the cavity, top of the cavity, as you can see. We're going to call this top cavity one or top cavity. So you can see that there are separate parts in the assembly by the fact that I'm now exploding them using the explode function. And you can also see inside the uh, in, in, in the tree the different parts. Here we're just going to show the original part as well. So here we get the final result very quickly of a splitting of quite a complicated part. Just bear notice that it's not yet finished because there are still some undercuts on the core of it.